know if I was destined to play this role, but I feel very fortunate to be doing so. The Crow was Brandon Lee's last film. Miramax Home Entertainment is proud to share his final on-camera interview, which includes exclusive, never-before-seen footage. The crow in the film, the bird in the film, you could really just look at as a guide, almost a piece of his own personality that guides him back into his life and reminds him who he was, what happened to him. This is a person who has been pushed right to the limits of his ability to cope with what is going on and in a sense is quite mad sometimes. In a sense is completely insane. Almost in the sense that you might think of an insane person having voices, you know, uh, more rational voices that uh, try and guide him, more irrational voices that come from a more emotional, more deep-seated place. I think that the crow is that rational voice. The crow is his guide. The crow helps Eric do what he has to do in a very practical sense. It leads him to the places that he has to be. It helps him find the people that he has to find. Come on. It's a story about justice for victims. Each one of these is a life. A life you helped destroy. His mission is to find the man who killed him and his fiance and kill them. Gentlemen! I just want him. It's a wonderful role, and it, it really is a role that you have to take risks with, and it gives you a wonderful opportunity to take those risks and stretch, because you tell me how somebody who comes back from the dead is going to behave, you know? You move your dead. And I say I'm dead, and I move. And that's one of the wonderful things about playing this character is it's a real, you can really take the gloves off in playing this part because there are no rules about how a person who has come back from the dead is going to behave. Listen! I'm sure you'll remember. You killed him on Halloween. You can't be you. We put you through the window. There ain't no coming back. And then there's the part of him that is filled with rage towards what was done to him. And one of the things I like best about this movie is the fact that all of those parts of the character are given balance on the screen. He's torn up. He's torn up really badly. Emotionally, physically, and psychically. She, uh, died at the hospital. Don't touch me! I saw her through your eyes. I think that the appeal of Eric's mission is that it is a very pure one. He has come back to seek justice. I've done other films that have had uh, violence in them but I must say I've never done anything where I felt that the violence was as justified as it is in this there's very little need to worry about compassion victims aren't we all this is justice you know and I truly feel that it is and I truly feel that if I were in the same situation I would do the same thing <laughs> something he has to do and he's forced to put aside his own pain long enough to go do what he has to do to tell the rest of them death is coming for them tonight this film deals with the concept of a balance being struck between good and evil i gave this to shelly once i think she'd like you to have it because we do not know when we will die we get to think of life as an inexhaustible well. And yet everything happens only a certain number of times. And a very small number, really. How many more times will you remember a certain afternoon of your childhood? An afternoon that is so deeply a part of your being that you can't even conceive of your life without it. 
perhaps four or five times more, perhaps not even that. How many more times will you watch the full moon rise? Perhaps 20, and yet it all seems limitless. Little things used to mean so much to Shelley. I used to think they were kind of trivial. Believe me, nothing is trivial. This is the point of view that this character is coming from in the whole film, because it has been brought sharply into focus for him how precious each moment of his life is. I love you. Say that again. I love you. This is the best role that I've had the opportunity to get my hands on in the film.